Grapispa, Gripiator's Prophecy, also known as Sigurdarkvitha Fafnisbana I, the first lay of Sigurd Fafnir's Slayer. The Grapispa immediately follows the prose Fraudauta Sinfiotla in the Codex Regius and is contained in no other early manuscript. It is unquestionably one of the latest of the poems in the Eddic collection. Most critics agree in calling it the latest of all, dating it not much before the year 1200. Its author, for in this instance the word may be correctly used, was not only familiar with the other poems in the Sigurd cycle, but seems to have had actual written copies of them before him. It has indeed been suggested, and not without plausibility, that the Grapispa may have been written by the very man who compiled and annotated the collection of poems preserved in the Codex Regius. In form, the poem is a dialogue between the youthful Sigurd and his uncle, Gripir, but in substance it is a condensed outline of Sigurd's whole career as told piecemeal in the older poems. The writer was sufficiently skillful in the handling of verse, but he was utterly without inspiration. His characters are devoid of vitality, and their speeches are full of conventional phrases with little force or incisiveness. At the same time, the poem is of considerable interest as giving, in brief form, a summary of the story of Sigurd as it existed in Iceland, for the Grapispa is almost certainly Icelandic in the later half of the 12th century. It is not desirable here to go into detail into immensely complex questions of the origin, growth, and spread of the story of Sigurd, Siegfried. The volume of critical literature on the subject is enormous, and although some of the more patently absurd theories have been eliminated, there are still wide divergencies of opinion regarding many important points. At the same time, a brief review of the chief facts is necessary in order to promote a clearer understanding of the poem which follow, and which make up more than a third of the Eddie collection. That the story of Sigurd reached the north from Germany, having previously developed among the Franks of the Rhine country, is now universally recognized. How and when it spread from northwestern Germany into Scandinavia are less certainly known. It spread indeed in every direction, so the traces of it are found wherever Frankish influence was extensively felt, and it was clearly better known and more popular in Norway and in the settlements established by Norwegians than anywhere else. We have historical proof that there was considerable contact, commercial and otherwise, between the Franks of northwestern Germany and the Norwegians, but not the Swedes or the Danes throughout the period from 600 to 800. Coins of Charlemagne have been found in Norway, and there is other evidence showing a fairly extensive interchange of ideas as well as of goods. Presumably then, the story of the Frankish hero found its way into Norway in the 7th century, while at this stage of its development it may have conceivably have included a certain amount of verse it is altogether probable that the story as it came into Norway in the 7th century was told largely in prose, and that even after the poets had got a hold of it, the legend continued to live among the people in the form of oral prose saga. The complete lack of contemporary material makes it impossible for us to speak with certainty regarding the character and content of the Sigurd legend as it existed in the Rhine country in the 7th century. It is, however, important to remember that often overlooked fact that any popular traditional hero become a magnet for originally unrelated stories of every kind. It must also be remembered that in the early Middle Ages, there existed no such distinction between fiction and history as we now make. A saga, for instance, might be anything from the most meticulously accurate history to the wildest fairy tales. And a single saga might, and sometimes did, combine both elements. This was equally true of the Frankish traditions, and the two principles just stated account for most of the puzzling phenomenon in the growth of the Sigurd story. 
of the origin of Sigurd himself, we know absolutely nothing. No historical analogy can be made to fit in the slightest degree. If one believes in the possibility of resolving hero stories into nature myths, he may be explained in that fashion, but such a solution is not necessary. The fact remains that from very early days, Sigurd, also known as Sifrit, was a great traditional hero among the Franks. The tales of his strength and valor, of his winning of a great treasure, of his wooing a more or less supernatural bride, and of his death at the hands of a kinsman, probably were early features of this legend. The next step was the blending of this story with one which had a clear basis in history. In the year 437, the Burgundians under their king, Gundicarius, so the Latin histories call him, was practically annihilated by the Huns. The story of this great battle soon became one of the foremost of Rhineland traditions, and though Attila was presumably not present in person, he was quite naturally introduced as the famous ruler of the invading hordes. The dramatic story of Attila's death in the year 453 was likewise ad added to the tradition, and during the 6th century the chain was completed by linking together the stories of Sigurd and those of the Burgundian slaughter. Gundukarius became the Gunther of the Nibelungalid and the Gunnar of the Eddic poems. Attila becomes Etzel and Atli. A still further development came through the addition of another and totally unrelated set of historical traditions based on the careers of Ermanaric, king of the Goths, who died about the year 376. Ermanaric figures uh, largely in many stories unconnected with the Sigurd cycle, but with the zeal of the medieval storytellers for connecting their heroes, he was introduced as the husband of Sigurd's daughter, Svanhild, herself originally part of a separate narratives group, and as Jormanaric, he plays a considerable part in a few of the Eddic poems. Such briefly appears to have been the development of the legend which before it came to Norway. Here it underwent many changes, though the clear marks of its southern origins were never obliterated. The names were giving Scandinavian forms, and in some cases were completely changed. Example, Kremhild becomes Guthrund. New figures, mostly of secondary importance, were introduced, and a large amount of purely northern local color was added. Above all, the earlier part of the story was linked with northern mythology in a way which seems to have had no counterpart among the southern Germanic peoples. The Volsungs became direct descendants of Odin. The gods were closely concerned with Fafnir's treasure and so on. Above all, the Norse storytellers and poets changed the figure of Brynhild in making her a Valkyrie sleeping on the flame-grit rock they were never completely successful as she persisted in remaining, to a considerable extent, the entirely human daughter of Bothley, whom Sigurd woos for Gunnar. This confusion intensified by mixing names, see the introductory note in Sigurd Fumal, and much resembling that which existed in the parallel cases of Svava and Sigrun in the Herlegi tradition, created difficulties which the Norse poets and storytellers were never able to smooth out and which have perplexed commentators ever since. Those who read the Sigurd poems in the Edda or the story told in the Volsunga saga expecting to find a critically accurate biography of a hero will of course be disappointed. If however they will con constantly keep in mind the general manner in which the legend grew, its accretions ranging all the way from the Danube to the Iceland, they will find that most of the difficulties are simply the natural results of conflicting traditions. Just as the Danish Helgi had to be reborn twice in order to enable three different men to kill him, so the story of Sigurd, as told in the Eddic poems, involves here and there inconsistencies explicably only when the historical development of the story is taken into consideration. Grapispa Gripir was the name of Ailimi's son, 
brother of Hjordis. He ruled over lands and was of all men the wisest and most forward seeing. Sigurd once was riding alone and came to Gripir's hall. Sigurd was easy to recognize. He found out in front of the hall a man whose name was Getir. Then Sigurd questioned him and asked, Who is it has this dwelling here? Or what do men call the people's king? Getir spake, Gripir is the name of the chieftain good, who holds the folk and the firm hand ruled. Sigurd spake, Is the king all-knowing not within? Will the monarch come with me to speak? A man unknown his counsel needs, and Gripir fain I soon would find. Getir spake, The ruler glad of Getir will ask, who seeks with Gripir's speech to have. Sigurd spake, Sigurd am I, am Sigmund's son, and Hjorlis the name of the hero's mother. Then Getir went and to Gripir spake, A stranger comes and stands without, lofty he is to look upon, and prince thyself he fain would see. From the hall the ruler of heroes went, and greeted well the warrior come. Sigurd, welcome, long since had been thine, now get here shalt thou granny take. Then of many things they talked, when thus the men so wise had met. Sigurd spake, To me, if thou knowest my mother's brother, say what life will Sigurd's be? Gripir spake, of men thou shalt be on earth the mightiest, and higher fame than all the heroes. Free of gold loving, slow to flee, noble to see, and sage in speech. Sigurd spake. Monarch wise, now more I ask, to Sigurd say, if thou thinkest see, what first will chance of my fortune fare, what hence I go from out thy home. Gripir spake, First shalt thou, prince, thy father avenge, and I limmy their ills requiting. The hardy sons of Hunding thou soon shall fell, and victory find. Sigurd spake, Noble king, my kinsmen say, thy meaning true, for our minds we speak. For Sigurd mighty deeds doth see, the highest beneath the heavens all, Gripir spake, The fiery dragon alone thou shalt fight, that greedy lies that Gningitid hath. Thou shalt be of Regan and Fafir, both the slayer, truth, both Gripir thee tell thee. Sigurd spake, Rich shall I be if battles I win, with such as these, and now thou sayest, Forward look and further tell what the life that I shall lead. Gripir spake, Fafnir, Fafnir's den thou shalt find, and all his treasure fair shall take. Gold shalt heap on Grani's bach, and proved in fight to Yuki fair. Sigurd spake, To the warrior now, in words so wise, Monarch noble, more shall tell. I am Gookie's guest, and thence I go. What the life that I shall lead? Gripir spake. On the rocks there sleeps the ruler's daughter, fair in armor since Helgi fell. Thou shalt cut with keen-edged sword, and cleave the burnie with Fafnir's killer. Sigurd spake. The mail coat is broken, the maiden speaks. The woman who from sleep is awakened. What says the maid to Sigurd then, the happy fate to hero brings? Gripir spake. Runes to the warrior will she tell. All the men may ever seek and teach thee to speak in all men's tongues. And life with health. Thou art happy, king. 
Sigurd spake. Now is it ended, the knowledge is won, and ready I am, for thence to ride. Forward look and further tell what the life that I shall lead. Gripir spake. Then to Hymir's home thou comest, and glad shall be the guest of the king. Ended, Sigurd, is all I see, no further aught of Gripir ask. Sigurd spake. Sorrow brings me the word thou sayest, for monarch forward further thou seest. Sad the grief, Sigurd, thou knowest, yet not to me, Gripir, known wilt make. Gripir spake, Before me lay in clearest light All of thy youth for mine eyes to see. Not rightly can I wise be called, Nor forward seeing. My wisdom is fled. Sigurd spake, No man, Gripir, on earth I know, Who sees the future as far as thou. Hide thou not, though hard it be, And base the deeds that I shall do. Gripir spake, With basest need, thy life is burdened, hero noble, hold that sure. Lofty as long as the world shall live, battle bringer thy name shall be. Sigurd spake, Naught could seem worse, but now must part, the prince and Sigurd, since so it is. My road, I ask, the future lies open. Mighty one speak, my mother's brother. Gripir spake. Now to Sigurd, all I shall say. For to this the warrior bends my will. Thou knowest well that I will not lie. A day there is when thy death is doomed. Sigurd spake. No scorn I know for the noble king. But counsel good with Gripir I seek. Well will I know, though evil awaits, what Sigurd may before him see. Gripir spake, A maid in Hymir, home there dwells, Brynhild her name to men is known, daughter of Boothly, the doughty king, and Hymir fosters, the father fearless mind. Sigurd spake, What is it to me? Though the maiden be so fair of an Hymar, fosterling is, Gripir truth to me shall tell, for all of fate before me thou seest. Gripir spake, Of many a joy the maiden robs thee, fair to see whom Hymar is. Sleep thou shalt fall in not, feuds thou shalt in not, nor seek out men if the maid thou seest not. Sigurd spake, What may be had for Sigurd's healing? Say now, Gripir, if see thou canst. May I buy the maid with the marriage price of daughter fair of the chieftain famed? Gripir spake, Ye twain shalt see all the oaths then swear. That bind full fast, few shall ye keep. One night with Gookies, guest thou shalt has been. Will Hymar's fosterling fade from thy mind? Sigurd spake. What sayest thou, Gripir? Give me the truth. This fickleness hide in the hero's heart? Can it be that troth I break with the maid? With her I believed I love so dear? Gripir spake, Tricked by another, prince thou art, And the price of Grimhild's wiles thou must pay. Fain of thee for the fair-haired maid. Her daughter she is, and she drags thee down. Sigurd spake, Might I with Gunnar kinship make, And Guthrun win to be my wife? Will the hero wedded would be, If my treacherous deed would trouble me not? Gripir spake, Holy Grimir, thy heart deceives. She will bid thee go and Brynhild woo for Gunnar's wife, the lord of the Goths, 
and Prince's mother thy promise shall win. Sigurd spake, Evil waits me, well I see it, and gone is Sigurd's good wisdom good. For I shall woo for another to win the maiden fair that so fondly I loved. Gripir spake, Ye three shall all the oaths then take, Gunnar and Hogni and Hero thou. Your forms ye shall change as forth ye tar. Gunnar and thou, for Gripir lies not. Sigurd spake, How meanest thou? Why make we the change of shape and form as forth we fare? There must follow another falsehood. Grim in all ways. Speak on, Gripir. Gripir spake, The form of Gunnar, shape thou gettest, but mind and voice thine own remain. The hand of the fosterling, noble of Hymia, now dost thou win, and none can prevent. Sigurd spake, Most evil it seems, and men will say, Base is Sigurd's that so he did. Not of my will shall I cheat with wiles. The hero's maiden, whom noblest I hold. Gripir spake, Thou know it dwellest, leader lofty of men, when the maid is as if thy mother she were, lofty as long as the world shall live, ruler of men, thy name shall remain. Sigurd spake, Shall Gunnar have a goodly wife, famed among men? Speak forth now, Gripir. Although at my side three nights she slept, the warrior's bride, such ne'er has been. Gripir spake, The warrior draughts will be drunk for both, For Sigurd the Gunnar and Gilkis Hall. Your forms ye change when home ye fare, But the mind of each to himself remains. Sigurd spake, Shall the kinship new thereafter come to good among us, Tell me, Gripir, to Gunnar joy shall it later give or happiest sin for me myself. Gripir spake, Thine oaths remembering, silent thou art, and dwellest with Guthrun in wedlock good. But Brynhild shall deem she is badly mated, and while she seeks herself to avenge. Sigurd spake, what may for the bride requital be, the wife we won with subtle wiles? For me she has the oaths I made, and kept not long. They gladdened her little. Gripir spake, To Gunnar soon this bride will say, That ill didst thou thine own oath fulfill, When the goodly king, the son of Gyuki, With all his heart the hero trusted. Sigurd spake, what sayest thou, Gripir? Tell me the truth. Am I guilty so now as said? Or lies does the far-famed queen put forth of me and herself? Yet further speak. Gripir spake, In wrath and grief, full little good, the noble bride shall work thee now. No fame thou gavest, the goodly one, though the monarch's wife with wiles didst cheat. Sigurd spake, Shall Gunnar the wise the woman's words, And Gothram and Hogni thee he give? Shall Gugi's sons, now tell me, Gripir, Redden their blades with their kinsmen's blood? Gripir spake, Heavy it lies on Guthrun's heart, When her brothers all shall bring thee death. Never again shall she see happiness, no. The woman so fair at his Grimhild's work. Sigurd spake, Now fare thee well, our fates we shun not, And well has Gripir answered my wish. More of joy to me wouldst tell Of my life to come, if so thou couldst. Gripir spake, Ever remember, ruler of men, 
that fortune lies in the hero's life. A nobler man shall never live beneath the sun and sigurd shall see. <laughs>